Now we uh, continue with the PowerPoint. So this discusses the, the toolbar. Um, if you go to, um, if you go and see what you have on the toolbar, you have file open, which will open the .pvis and the .text formats. Uh, we have save as, which will save the current uh, picture. They say you use that or when you say read in a .text, and then you change a lot of the parameters and color it in various special ways, then you do a save. Uh, you can do a play, which is this thing here. That rotates the plot gradually. We can do the select points. We um, by uh, with this uh, select button here to show the labels. That's the fastest way of doing labels. Here we can show only half the sphere. I must admit I've never used that option. Uh, we can set the uh, reset the viewpoint, and we can select a custom origin. So this is reset, and this is select. This gives you back to the original viewpoint, and this selects a custom origin. As well as the uh, toolbar, we have the sidebar, and we've illustrated the sidebar uh, with various things. We showed you the color map. Um, we showed you the individual clusters at the top. And then when you select the cluster like here, you will get its properties, and then you can change these properties. You can change the color, you can change the shape as the shape of the glyph, and so on. So, and the, there are these features like point size, which are true for all um, for all clusters. And then when you select a cluster up here, you can get a more limited set of capabilities, which are the ones you can change for individual clusters. Each cluster can, for instance, have its own glyph size. There's also the global glyph size, if you want to increase them all by the same amount. Um, so here's um, a couple of examples. This is one from generative topographic mapping, some oil uh, flow data, uh, which, had, which was in 12 dimensions and with 1,000 points. And you want to find the cluster, the clustering of these um, um, flows um, for each observation. And so when you do that, um, you then map it to three dimensions and so use this generated topographic mapping because this is a 12 dimensional vector. GTM works well when you have uh, vector spaces. It doesn't work when you only have distances, you need more vectors. And so it gets a nice three dimensional representation. And you can see the structure nicely. If you want um, parallel generated topographic mapping, we have that on our site, but that's not the purpose of this talk. That will be a different talk to describe how to use that. And so when you do that, you'll get a structure like this, which shows rather a striking um, um, clustering. And um, this is on our basic uh, screenshots and samples page. And what you have here is a um, Generated topographic mapping runs using MPI in parallel. But I doubt that this program really needs to run in parallel. It just illustrates how you run a four way parallel version for this particular problem. Here's another example from um, a trading data. This is very old data from 1986. And um, this represents the amount of tr pairwise trade between countries. Uh, so this is not vector data, but this is a data which have a distance, which, mean, which, mean, which um, measures the uh, um, how, how much trade there is between um, um, between the uh, countries, where zero means they presumably have a lot of trade, and one means they don't have much trade, and then um, you map that into into um, Three dimensions. You, we have you, here. You can use. Um, we have a nice multi-dimensional scaling that you use, but for this small amount of data, you can go to the statistics package R, which has the so-called Smackov method, which is a very good approach to this problem. And uh, here's how you get the um, the R program at the London R website. 
and here's how you actually run Smacker for this problem. And, um, and then you can write out the data in a plot this compatible form. And that gives you um, some plots like this with, um, we have the British Commonwealth at the uh, green, so they look, so look as though they have close connections. Uh, South America, orange, uh, communist states. So this is, remember, this is a Cold War type, which are um, blue and red purple. And it doesn't actually say what the blue points are. That's unfortunate. This is the um, lots of other things. USA, France, United Kingdom. It's a bit surprising the United Kingdom is nearer the uh, members of the British Commonwealth. And here we have, because that's because uh, at least in, in some of them are maybe because of the geographic location. So uh, here we have Japan, USA. So this is actually a pretty um, the structure here is a little strange, and um, it's not so easy to interpret. And now we do, uh, that's the end of the sort of technical discussion. And we will now go through some examples, starting with those oil flow and trading data examples, which have pbiz files, plotbiz files. Uh, then we have a solvents uh, example, which is on the PlotBiz uh, web page as a, an example. And then we have two examples from a research study in uh, uh, sequence data. So let's now do those examples. Maybe we should do five. And we'll start off with the oil flow data. I say there's PBIS and text. I will just use the PBIS one. Say the text file you can also use. Um, but if you read in the text with file, if you want to use glyphs, you'd have to feed that in. And you'd have to also um, possibly change the coloring. And um, we have uh, three, cla three classes of flow, homogeneous, annular, and stratified. And these observations, remember in 12 dimensions, map to three. So let's, uh, let's make this bigger. Again, we'll get one of these miserable axes. And now we'll make it just pretty much bigger. You can see these are now glyphs, so that's why it was a PBIS file. It had glyphs to find. And so you can browse the structure. And we didn't set auto orientation, that's why they've become looking funny. We set auto orientation to true, so they will keep facing you. Uh, otherwise, you will just see the sides of a or finding a two-dimensional shape, which won't look very good to you. And of course, we can come up here and look at homogeneous. That is a sort of, actually I just removed it. I can give it back to you. And then come down here and um, maybe change it to a different color. Let's see what color should we have. How about a, what is a green maybe? How about a top? Blue, a green, and a purple. And we're changing the blue, so let's make right now we can look at this color here. And so it's this bright orange brown color. And there we are. We can even you know, we can come to these green things here. And maybe we don't like them, so let's actually reduce their size. They now have a glyph size of 0.5. So you can see they do look small. So we've now made those ones small. And we can make the whole thing bigger if we want to, to look at more structure. So that's what we've done here. Now we're also rotating it by using our ordinary mouse and trackball, track, um, trackpad. 
and we're just dragging our finger on the trackpad, holding down the right. So the, the left mouse, if we do the right mouse, then we actually change the scale. So we can make it smaller or bigger. We roughly the same. And that's the oil flow data. 